Hello everyone, uh, Pastor Jesse Morales here from Thames River Church. Uh, just wanted to update you all. Um, as you all know, the uh, elders and I got together on Sunday after service uh, to discuss our plans as a church moving forward uh, now that the, uh, the state is giving uh, us guidelines uh, as far as reopening. And so I wanted to read a, a couple of scriptures uh, to you uh, just so that you can understand that uh, we did not take this lightly. Uh, we have really been uh, praying and really uh, thinking about this, uh, uh, trying to figure out what was the best way for us as a church and making sure that we're doing everything that we can to keep you safe and to keep you uh, feeling uh, comfortable when we do come together. Uh, so I wanted to read some scriptures to you. So let me start with that and then I'll go ahead and uh, lay out the, the plans that we have uh, for Thames River Church. So I want to read out of uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 3 verses 1 through 14 and it says, There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under the, under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain, refrain from embracing, a time to, re, to, to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And then I'll finish uh, the rest of this, uh, the scripture here because I think it, it, it brings context to uh, what we're doing as a church. It says, What do workers gain for their toil? I have been the burden, I have seen the burden God has laid on, on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in His time. He has also sent, set eternity in the heart, human heart. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to, be, and, and to do good while they live, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear Him. And so I felt that that was fitting as we talk about what the Lord uh, has for us as a church. And I, 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 I felt that it was fitting because uh, it says here that, that, that God makes everything beautiful in His time. And so uh, the elders and I felt that this was the perfect time uh, for us to move forward as a church um, as we uh, prepare uh, to reopen our uh, our gathering. I also want you to uh, find comfort in knowing that uh, we also believe, as the elders, we also believe that there's wisdom in counsel. And so let me read uh, three more scriptures to you, just so you understand that we, again, we don't take this lightly and that this is something that we really had to uh, work through, something we had to grapple with. And so uh, Proverbs 15, 22 says, Without counsel, plans fail, but with many advisors, they succeed. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in the abundance of counselors, there is safety. And then finally, Proverbs 24, 6, it says, For by wise guidance, you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors, there is victory. So we believe that as we came together as elders and as we uh, 
sought to sought the Lord first of all and sought the Lord to find out how we can serve you as a congregation and how we can set things in place uh, for you to feel safe and uh, for you to be able to come and meet at the church. Uh, these are the things that uh, we decided to do. I know many of you are, are, are asking, so when is the day? When is the big day? When is the big day that we're going to come together? Well, we want to welcome you back home on Sunday, June 7th, uh, 2020, uh, starting at 10 a.m. Now, that, that day is going to look uh, a little different than uh, before uh, we closed the building. But the reasons why they're go it's going to look different is for your, uh, your safety. And so we were looking out for you. And so let me just go over that with you quickly. So the first thing is that when you enter uh, the building, uh, you will have ushers uh, at the door and they will be taking everyone's temperature. We want to make sure that as you enter into the building, if there's anyone coming in, or wanting to come in that may uh, have a temperature, uh, we're going to uh, very politely ask them uh, not to enter the building for the safety of everyone else. Uh, we will also have uh, an usher assist everyone and, and assist families uh, to, uh, to or, or with seating. Uh, we're going to have um, in the sanctuary, the seating is going to look different than it, it had, than it looked two months ago. Uh, chairs will be spaced at least six feet apart with designated areas for families. And so we're going to have families sitting together, and those who come in uh, as individuals by themselves will have an area for them to sit. Um, also, while we're in the sanctuary, um, we, we're going to uh, add some seating downstairs in the multi-purpose room uh, for the purpose of practicing social distancing. So right now the number is 50 people or less and so uh, I know and the elders, uh, both the elders and I agreed that uh, there are going to be some of you who still don't feel uh, comfortable by uh, in, in coming to the church and, and we're perfectly f we're fine with that. We understand that. Um, as far as greeting, you know, that's one of the uh, great things of our church is that we love to greet one another. And so what, I, uh, what we're asking is, and what, what I'm going to ask of you to do for me, um, so that I don't uh, lose any more of my hair, just kidding, <laughs> um, is that we uh, abstain from hugging and shaking hands. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to encourage you, highly encourage you to wave at one another. Uh, we still want to greet one another, uh, but we want to maintain that social distancing until we know that it's safe to uh, start to uh, greet one another with hugs and handshakes once again. As far as wearing masks, um, everyone uh, will be required to wear a mask while in the building. Uh, so we're asking that you bring your own mask. Uh, we will have some, uh, we will have a, a small supply, but that's just for people who uh, may have come in and forgot theirs at home. And so we want to have uh, a, a small supply uh, to be able to help uh, people be able to come in uh, on, on Sunday morning. The other thing I want to uh, add there with the mask is, is, is that uh, while the preacher is preaching, he will not be wearing a mask, so we will make sure that uh, there is uh, plenty of distance between the, sp the speaker and the front rows. Uh, also, we will have uh, the worship team practice social distancing while they're leading us in worship. And so, uh, again, uh, I can't stress this enough, we want to make sure that everyone is safe, so we're asking that everyone would wear a mask. As far as nursery and children's church, uh, there will be no nursery or children's church programs during the service since it's impossible for us to uh, practice social distancing with, with the children. And so we're, because of that, we're asking that families with children uh, keep their children with them at all times. We want to make sure that um, 
that that you know the children are also part of the service so they will be staying with uh, the families upstairs during uh, worship and so we're asking for your help as families with children to main, to keep your to, to keep your children with you so that we can all feel uh, safe bathrooms bathrooms is a big thing that uh, we as the elders we uh, kind of uh, try to figure out how this was going to work, and so we think that this is uh, uh, something that we we need to do. Uh, so the uh, downstairs bathroom, uh, we we're asking that no more than two people at a time uh, in the men's room and in the uh, women's room, uh, best uh, restrooms. So uh, no more than two people at a time in the men's room and in the ladies' rooms. The upstairs bathrooms, we want to reserve those for uh, the handicapped and families with children. So unless, unless, unless you're handicapped or a fa uh, uh, taking your child to the bathroom, let me, let me just specify there. So if my, myself, for example, I have children, but if I'm going to use the bathroom, I will use the one downstairs if, if it's just me. If I'm, uh, if, if, if I'm, if I'm taking my son, or you know, or uh, then then I would use the up uh, the upstairs bathroom. So downstairs if it's for you, upstairs if it's for you uh, to assist your child. And so we want to make sure that everybody is safe. Exiting the building. Uh, so as you saw, um, when you come in, you uh, will have to have your temperature taken. Um, we will assist you with seating. And so then as you exit uh, the building, oh, as you exit the building, uh, we will also assist you. And the way we're going to do that is um, we're going to, uh, after the service, we will have, we will dismiss people uh, by rows uh, with the assistance of, of an usher. Um, and so we're asking that everyone please who wishes to uh, come to to, to service on, on an in-person uh, uh, to, to come and worship, that you abide by these rules. This is going to keep you safe and it's going to keep the rest of us safe. Stay-at-home recommendations. So we're asking that if you're sick, uh, if you're a high risk, or if you simply don't feel safe to return yet, we're asking that you stay home. And for the, those of you who may not be sick, or are, or or at our or, or are at uh, high risk, but you just simply don't feel safe to return yet. We want you to stay home, and I, we don't want you to feel uh, judged uh, because we're not here to judge anyone. Uh, we want everyone that shows up at church that they're showing up at church because they feel safe and because they want to be there. Um, if you're not, if you, again, if you don't feel safe, we ask that you stay at home. Building maintenance. So the building will be cleaned before every service. We will make sure that all doorknobs and door handles uh, throughout the building are sanitized um, to, again, to keep us all uh, safe. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I'm re really excited about us moving forward uh, and, and reopening and, and coming together again. Um, all of these things that I just went over with you here on this uh, video, I will send to you uh, by email. I'll have uh, Tamara go ahead and send this to all of the people who may not have uh, Facebook. Uh, but we will send it to you by email, and also I will send it to the uh, TRC uh, eBulletin uh, Facebook page that we have. So, again, this is something that uh, took us... Uh, a lot to think about and we understand uh, the concerns we understand that some people are going to be on the side of hey I'm staying home I I, I, I don't feel safe yet and, and that's understandable and 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 no one's going to uh, be upset with you about that that's what you need to do and we're going to respect that I also want to speak about the people who are ready to be there who want to be there on the 7th on June 7th and uh, I want us to understand that there are those who, who will say, yes, I'm going to be there. And uh, so 
uh, for those people, uh, you're not going to be judged either for wanting to be at the church on the 7th. And for those who don't feel safe yet, you're not going to be judged for not wanting to be there yet. We want to respect both sides of the spectrum. There's, there's, there's always been two different uh, uh, schools of thought, and so we want to respect both of those. We don't want to be a stumbling block for any of our brothers and sisters, but we want to be of encouragement, and we want to lift each other up. Uh, we want to instill uh, hope. We want to instill safety. We want to instill confidence in every one of our brothers and sisters. And so uh, that's what we will be doing. And uh, we're excited about what God is, is doing and um, what He will continue to do. So now for Sunday service live streaming, all Sunday services will continue uh, to uh, be live streamed on Facebook. Um, I hope that you've enjoyed the live streaming and uh, we're uh, constantly working to improve that for you uh, and we want to give you the best quality that we can possibly give you. Uh, we will also be uploading to our YouTube channel the service that is live streamed on Facebook. Now uh, the YouTube channel is something that I'm managing and so it, it may take a day or two uh, before uh, it's loaded up, but just be, just bear with us. Try to be patient with us. We're trying to do everything that we can to serve you, um, and uh, uh, but I'm just uh, thankful that we're able to do this. And so, uh, with your help and your prayers, which is the greatest help that you can uh, give us, is to pray for us as a church. Pray for us as. Uh, as leaders, pray for your leaders and continue to uh, lift us up before the Lord. Uh, the Lord will give us more, uh, more wisdom as we move forward. Uh, one last thing I do want to mention is that the elders and I, we talked about in the case that uh, we find out that someone uh, tested positive for uh, COVID-19 during this, after the reopening, uh, we're prepared to shut down for two weeks uh, if that were the case, uh, we don't want we don't, we don't want to leave anything open to chance. We want to make sure that we have uh, covered every area and that we've done everything we could possibly humanly do uh, to keep you safe and to keep everyone safe. So, um, again, pray for us. We need your prayers. We love you. We care for you, and uh, I'm excited. And I hope that you are excited too. Like I said, I will send this out to everyone. I'm still working on a few other things. And so I want to send it all together as a package. Uh, so spread the word out there. Um, I recorded this not live, but I, rec I pre-recorded this for the purpose of making sure that I only send it to you for now. Uh, I just want to send it to the church uh, members first. And then we'll let the public know. Uh, one other thing, and, and I'll end with this, is that we are 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 excited to 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 share with you that when we live stream our services many people have been watching we've been able to reach many people people that uh to be honest with you i've checked to see if they were connected to the church somehow and i didn't see uh that they were connected to anyone in the church uh, but there were all the there. There are others that were connected. Um, the the point I'm making is that when we do return, when we do come back together again, we may see new faces, and so I want to encourage everyone to uh, reach out to those people that may be in our assembly, the new people, and make them feel at home. We want them to feel uh, that this is their home. We want them to feel uh, as part of the church, and uh, we want to make them. Uh, members of the church. Uh, that's what the Lord has called us to do, is to make disciples of all nations, and uh, we want to do that. Amen. So God bless you. Uh, the Lord keep you. Thank you for watching. And again, like I said, I will send this out to you in a package as soon as uh, I have it all together. God bless you. Bye-bye.